Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another third party unlicensed 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review video. Now today we are going to be taking a look at none other than So So Toys Herman aka Rorschach based off the Zack Snyder Watchmen film. Now back in the day Hot Toys made a comedian and a silk spectre but they didn't make the rest of the crew. It seems like So So Toys will be picking up where Hot Toys left off and also making a few improvements to figures that Hot Toys already made along the way. Now, I personally really did enjoy the film, so I've been super excited to get this guy. Do bear in mind though, it's third party, it's unlicensed, this is an unofficial product. I got mine from Comic Sanctorum. I have included the link in the description below, but do bear in mind this isn't a promotional video, this is a review on a figure I picked up for my own personal collection. What we are going to do now though is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. Here of course we have the box art, and So So Toys always do an awesome job with their packaging. Up front and centre we do have an image of Rorschach unmasked, Herman down below, plus the So So Toys logo. Herman once again on the side, plus the various warnings on the back. Now on the inside you do have another image of Rorschach, this time with his mask on and he's holding his grappling gun. Now this guy actually does come with a ton of stuff and some really awesome effect pieces. So yeah, I can't wait to see how it all comes together and how those effect pieces look now that I have him in hand. Here we have Rorschach himself though. First in hand impressions are pretty darn positive. There are a few things that So So Toys changed and improved at the very last minute to get this guy as accurate and durable as possible. We'll talk about those throughout the course of the video. Now he does have one tray up top and another down below, so what we are going to do now is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Here we have all the parts and pieces. Now starting off with the display base first, it's done in the usual So So Toy style. It's hexagonal, there's the metal grate flooring up on top, this time done in a darker green, the Watchman smiley face logo and then a regular crotch grabber. Now you do get three different Rorschach head sculpts. The underlying sculpt is exactly the same between the three, it's just the pattern that's been painted on the front that's slightly different. I'm perfectly fine with that because it is supposed to be the same mask with the ink blots morphing and changing. Now you do have a bit of a seam line running along the top so it kind of looks like it's two pieces of fabric that's been sewn together, a little point up the front plus the suggestion of his ears, his eyes and his nose. I love the texture to the mask and the paint applications for the ink blots are on point. You also get a hat which very cleverly and securely press fits up on top and there is a little bit of sculpted in texture and the colour scheme of the hat matches his outfit perfectly. Don't worry, we will be trying the head sculpts plus the hat on the body a little bit later in the video. You also get the wooden sign. This is sculpted to perfection. It actually looks like real wood, it isn't though, it is sculpted plastic and the end is nigh is actually etched into the surface, it's not just painted on. There are multiple washers here, the nails have been picked out in a gold paint, this is a very nicely done piece. You also get a couple of smaller accessories, starting off with a 1-6 scale version of that smiley face button, you also get a pencil plus the journal. It says journal on top and you can see the years underneath that. It isn't a real book, it's a sculpted plastic piece, but at the end of the day it will totally get the job done. You also get one of the coolest steampunk looking grappling guns that I've ever seen. It's painted in this gunmetal style colour and you can actually actuate these pieces on the front of the hook 
plus you can remove it. As you can see, you have multiple different versions of the hook that has been shot out. They are on real metal wires, and once again, you can actuate the pieces on the end. This is totally my favourite, but if you want to go for a more traditional straight line version, you have that option as well. And once again, this piece is metal. This one, because it is slightly longer, does tend to droop down ever so slightly, but it still totally works. He also comes with this mini can of hairspray and one of the most badass effect pieces that I have ever seen. When you see him actually holding this, it's a very convincing effect, and of course, we will try it out throughout the course of the video. But basically, he holds the can in one hand and this piece in the other, and it looks like he's blasting some fire off this piece, which was just a much smaller flame originally. I also like the way the matches are sculpted down below. It's painted in a very wooden style finish, if you know what I mean. He also comes with a couple of spare hands, including one specifically sculpted to hold the hairspray. They all look great. There's some texture here, they are done in a flat brown paint, they're supposed to be leather gloves. What we are going to do now though is get Rorschach himself out here and take a closer look. Here we have him standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. And for the most part, this guy is pretty straightforward. He does exactly what it says on the tin. It's a movie version of Rorschach. I really like this figure. I enjoyed the movie, so maybe that's why I'm more prone to liking this than others, but the costume design is awesome. They also made some last minute changes, as I already alluded to earlier, that have improved the way this guy looks, and hopefully the way this guy will last over time, more on that in just a second. The proportions are on point, the head sculpt sits at roughly around the right height, depending on how you have the collar and the scarf situated, but overall, yes, this guy ticks a lot of boxes for me. And for those wondering, no, you cannot use the unmasked head sculpt with the hat. It is specifically designed to go on the masked versions. What we are going to do now though is take him off the rotating turntable, punch in and take a closer look at the details. Here we have him, up close and personal. Now in just a second, we will swap out the head sculpt just to see what he looks like with the various masked head sculpts on. I'm as of yet undecided if I'm going unmasked or masked in my display. Now let's talk about this head sculpt for a second, because it is absolutely incredible. This might be one of Soso -So Toy's best head sculpts ever. The likeness is on point, I love the expression, the skin texture, and the paint applications. It's darn near Hot Toys quality. I love the way they've sculpted the hair and the battle damage on the forehead and the cheek. It's all very nicely done. Now something that they did change at the last minute is the jacket. They were going to go with a pleather style material. But they heard the folks online saying, please don't make it out of pleather, it's gonna flake. So they changed it to this. It's a very soft but waxy material, so it has a leather-like look, but it's actually fabric. That means this isn't going to crack and degrade over time. I am so happy that they did this. And it looks great, it looks like weathered leather. It's darker in certain sections and lighter in others. Even though the pleather would have looked awesome, I think this was absolutely the best choice. It also fits and hugs the body very nicely. Now up top with the collar, technically to be film accurate, the front has to be pinned down and the back has to sit up high. I'm going to steam mine and see if it'll sit down and play ball, but if it doesn't, you could always fold the collar down and then it'll expose a little bit more of his neck. Now you may be wondering, what's going on with this piece? This is actually 
film and comic book accurate. Now, if you have the collar down, you can tuck this underneath and keep it in place, but in both the Watchmen movie and also in the comics, this was always free-floating and dangling where it is now. So, yeah, I'm really glad that they did that. That's some next-level attention to detail. Now, underneath the outer jacket, he is wearing a scarf, which is slightly dirtied up and weathered, and there is a purple pinstripe suit jacket. Now, I was tempted to remove this and see what he looks like without this on, but then I saw how neatly this was tied and how neatly everything was put together, so I decided to leave it the way it is. I'm pretty sure those of you out there who are more adventurous than I am, we'll take this off and see what it looks like. Now the pants are a straight up suit pant, they're purple and they are pinstriped, and down here for the shoes, there's some brown leather style business shoes. There's some texture sculpted into the surface, and the toes are a little bit more dirtied up. Underneath, you do have a fully sculpted tread, and just a very slight weathering pass over the top, it's not crazy, but it's definitely there. Now, for those wondering what he looks like wearing one of the masked head sculpts, here we have the first one, and yeah, this looks really cool. I was tempted to go unmasked in the display just because that head sculpt is so well done, but these look really menacing. Now, they all fit exactly the same. They are the same underlying sculpt, of course, so they sit at the same height, and they'll give you the same range of motion. It's just the patterns on the front which are slightly different. So if you do want to try one of the other options... And this one actually might be one of my favourites. I love the more concentrated look to the black around the eye area. It kind of gives me an old school 90s Nightwing vibe. But I guess that's the best part about the Rorschach test, is at the end of the day you will see something that's unique to yourself. So you can pick your favourite. But of course there is one final option, which is of course this one. It's absolutely my favourite of the three. I love the suggestion of his eyes within the black part of the mask. They're white, so it looks like a comic book style masked character, and they are slanted downwards, so it gives him a very menacing expression. Now, I have popped the collar down, but if you wanted to, you could totally pop it up at the back or even entirely, just to give him an even more awesome look. Now, I am tempted to display him this way, with the collar fully popped, but I do want to hear from you. Do let me know which of the various display options is your favourite. Now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, I wanted to compare him to the Hot Toys Comedian and Silk Spectre, but unfortunately, I don't own them. But I do have the tactical bat suit from Zack Snyder's Justice League. A lot of people did draw some design similarities between him and Owl Man, specifically the shape of the ears on the cowl and the goggles, so I guess this works as a Zack Snyderverse style comparison. Either way, Ben Affleck is a huge dude, and Rorschach in the comics is supposed to be around 5 foot 6, he's supposed to be a smaller guy, so this works perfectly, at least for me. If it doesn't for you, then yeah, I totally understand, you could always use a bigger body or some ankle extenders, but I think this is about right. Now for a so-so toys comparison, here we have their recently released Nightwing, aka Night Vigilante. And as you can see, Dick Grayson is quite a lot taller than Rorschach here. It's going to be up to you whether or not that bothers you, whether it works or not, for me, it's perfectly fine. I like that they've lent into that smaller stature that he's supposed to have, and he does scale in fairly well alongside their other figures. I think when we get their comedian and potentially more characters from the movie, there are going to be various sizes and scales at play, so on a shelf, it's going to look a lot more interesting. Just going over articulation. Now, bear in mind, this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful. I'm sure when you get yours in hand, you can push the joints slightly further than I'm willing to go. Now, starting off with the head sculpt, it is on a double ball peg. You do have it going forward to there, going back to there, swivel and then pivot side to side. The arms will go up to 90. They will of course go forward and back. 
There is a butterfly joint at the shoulder, a single bend at the elbow that does incorporate a swivel, plus a regular 1-6 scale wrist peg. Now, due to the multiple layers built up underneath the jacket, he is going to be slightly more restricted in terms of crunching. He does go forward a little, he goes back, swivel, and then a little bit of pivot side to side. The legs will go forward to there, they will go out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, a double bend at the knee that goes past 90, Plus, lastly, a ball joint down here for the ankle. Just wrapping up on Soso Toys Rorschach, aka Herman. Now, going into this, I was super hype. Not everyone is a huge fan of Zack Snyder's Watchmen film, I totally understand. But I'm pretty sure we can all agree that the costume design was on point. That means that most of these characters, when released in figure format, will either be able to go into a comic book display or a film display. Starting off with Rorschach was a genius move. That means people who already own the Hot Toys Silk Spectre and Comedian will probably pick this guy up to fill out their line. They're not picking up a character they already have. And those of us out there who don't have any Watchmen figures, we're also getting something different, something that's never been made by any other 1-6 scale companies, at least not to this standard. You get four head sculpts, all of which are fantastic. The clear standout, though, is the unmasked head sculpt. You're also getting a very well-tailored outfit, plus they changed the jacket material at the last minute to this stunning waxy style fabric that looks great and won't peel and flake over time. Then they threw in one of the most badass effect pieces I have ever seen in the form of the flame and the hairspray can. It works perfectly. Overall, yeah, I absolutely recommend this guy. He's now one of my favorite So-So Toys releases. Now, I got mine from Comic Sanctorum, but do bear in mind this is third party, it's unlicensed, this guy is an unofficial product. I have popped the link in the description below for your reference purposes only. While you're down there, why not check out the link to Six Scale Network, the Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next in the channel. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.